Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 630 Multi Instance. We're actually going to configure the multi instance during this session. Um, so a little bit about multi instance. So you may be familiar with um, security context or virtual firewalling, which traditionally most vendors do. Um, and Cisco did that with a uh, capability called context. And it's partitioned into multiple logical firewalls, um, but it added a lot of complexity and was not, uh, did not have true separation around data and management plane. Um, the other thing that could happen in um, uh, context or virtual firewalling is that one tenant can easily over uh, subscribe resources, right? Whether that be CPU and memory. Uh, and this could impact anything on that physical device. There was other limitations around code versions, etc. So Cisco developed what we call this multi-instance. It's, it's a true multi-tenancy uh, solution that overcomes a lot of those constraints. Um, and what it did was simplify management, uh, complete data plane and management plane separation. It allows firewalling uh, instances, including things like guest, uh, that are completely independent or independent and isolated from each other. And that includes CPU, memory, and disk reservation. So they have their own allocated resources. Each container instance behaves like a separate firewall with their own software images. So you can downgrade, upgrade, reboot, all independent 100%. You can even test upgrades. With Firepower, uh, there, depending on the platform, you could certainly, or you're limited to the number of instances that you can deploy. If you wanna know the number of uh, CPUs that you might have on a appliance, you can SSH in and uh, run the following commands. <clears throat> so what we're gonna build, we're gonna have a uh, 4110. It's going to have two instances running on it, uh, FTDA, and an instance called FTDB, and we have an inside zone that's tied to FTDB, sorry. Um, we have an outside zone, and then we have an inside zone A that's uh, obviously tied to FTDA. Uh, uh, again, management uh, manages the platform. We've got some IP addressing over here, just so you have a uh, good visual of what's taking place or if you wanna rebuild this yourself. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into platform settings. We're gonna go to resource profiles um, and we're gonna create one. The, there is a default small one, but really what resource uh, allows you to do or resource profiles allows you to do is uh, specify resource usage per container instance. So you can create one or more resource profiles. When you deploy a logical device or application instance, you specify the, these profiles, right? Um, the resource profile sets the number of CPU cores. RAM is dynamically allocated to the number of cores and disks is set to 40 gig per instance. Um, there's some minimums, right, which is six. You can't specify eight cores due to internal architecture. You can assign cores as an even number, right? Six, 10, 12, 14, etc., up to the maximum. So it gives you a little insight into what uh, profiles are. Uh, so we've got a medium one here. We've got uh, 10 cores assigned to it. So when we create an instance um, and we use the medium resource profile, we're allocating 10 cores. We're gonna dynamically create the memory to support that and there'll be 40 gigs of disk allocated to it. So we're gonna add a device, okay? And uh, here we'll give it a name. The template is uh, Cisco Firepower Threat Defense. The image version is there. Um, in our case, it's standalone, and, and we're going to change the uh, instance type from native to container. Okay, so native would be that this is all that's running on this particular hardware module. Um, and then here it says you must reinitialize the security module engine uh, so that the disk is the correct formatting. Um, you only need to perform this action once and um, we've already done that in the previous video, or at least we talked about it, right? It was already done by me, but uh, I did talk about it in the previous video. But it's pretty simple. You just go into the, uh, the, the um, interface and you just reinitialize. So here we're gonna assign some interfaces to that uh, instance or FTDA. So we've got one slash two and one slash three. And now we're gonna configure um, the or bootstrap firepower threat defense. So here's where we're gonna select our 
uh, resource profile, right? So there's the medium uh, resource profile that we just created, management interface. That's that ethernet one one. You saw that in the previous video. We're using IPv4 and we're gonna give it a management IP address. Now, network mask and then obviously network gateway. So for the most part, we're doing um, everything from start to finish so you can uh, see what is expected. There's really no uh, steps missed except for um, as we move along, there's objects that are already created with, within Firepower Management Center because that's not really the focus of this. And for the device itself, we actually use a script uh, using the RESTful API using Python to actually add it into FMC. Again, that's fairly trivial. I've got lots of videos that show that, but it's just to simplify some of that. And then finally, we do have a script just to give the IP addressing to the interfaces themselves on each uh, Firepower Threat Defense instance. Again, I've got lots of videos that show you how to go in and configure that. So those are the only two kind of um, steps that we've, we've automated. And again, they're fairly trivial or simple steps. Uh, I just wanted to save time when building out the, the video instead of showing you it end to end uh, in that case. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of routing and then validation, right? And these are going to be, uh, as you know, we've already done one video. This is the second and there'll be two more after this. So here we've uh, entered the registration key. This is what we're going to register to Firepower Management Center. We're, we've given it a password. We've highlighted the Firepower Management interface. We've said that we want to permit expert mode on FTD SSH sessions. We've done our search domain. Firewall mode is going to be either routed or transparent. Uh, in our case, we're going to do routed for both. Uh, DNS servers, we're going to enter here. We do have NAT in the environment. Um, that upstream router is uh, performing a NAT function, so we're, we're creating a Firepower Management NAT ID um, here. And eventing interface, uh, so none, because we didn't build that in the previous video. So you could have management and eventing as separate interfaces with um, Firepower Threat Defense. And more specifically with FXOS, you can assign that. So here you're gonna accept the agreement. I have to scroll down on the side here just because I'm RDP'd in. And we'll hit OK. Go back to the top, we'll hit save. And that now is going to start the initial installation of Firepower Threat Defense Instance A. Um, and it's going to uh, be ready to be registered in Firepower Management Center. So you can see it installing here. Again, uh, while this is happening, we're, we're able to, uh, you know, see the versioning, the resource profile, the management IP, the gateway, etc. cetera. Um, but we're not limited to waiting for this uh, process to finalize, right? So we can go ahead and create another uh, instance if we wanted to. And that's what we're going to do here. So we'll add the device and this is going to be more of the same. The big thing that, or the big difference is, is that we're going to grab different interfaces, obviously, um, as well as um, the IP addressing on the device itself is going to be different, right? So give it in the names, right? So give it a name. See the image version. Again, container. Just reminding you that you'd have to reinitialize if you didn't. And now you can see that one uh, slash two and one slash three are not even showing up as data ports available, right? Because they're already assigned. So again, fairly simple. We're just using two interfaces. We've carried them over. And again, uh, you've seen this, right? So no harm in seeing it twice, I guess, right? And again, we're building all this out and this is roughly around, I think this video is roughly around 15 minutes. Uh, and then you're ready to, to actually um, do some of the finalizing of the, the device configuration and then assign policy and you're good to go. So management IP, net mask and network gateway.
and then we'll move over to settings yep everything looks good registration key remember remember this is what we're going to register to firepower management center so this key has to be the same on both and um, although again I, I mentioned that uh, this is going to be done through a Python script just to simplify adding the device and, and building the interfaces um, when you add the device manually you would enter this this registration key in enter the password firepower management IP address We're going to permit expert mode for FTD SSH sessions. Uh, routed mode. We'll enter that search domain. And you can see here, if you haven't noticed, this is in dcloud. So if you ever want to go through the lab exercise yourself, uh, reach out to your local um, Cisco rep and uh, ask them to uh, publish the instance to you so you can play around a little bit with it. And they've got multiple uh, D cloud. If you're not familiar, it's demo cloud environment, but they have tons of uh, different scenarios that you can play with, uh, all kinds of different technologies from Cisco. So again, you gotta accept the agreement, no way around that. We'll save it out. And now these are gonna initialize and finalize, right? And this will take a little bit of time, right? This is actually, uh, you know, deploying FTD, uh, running the database uh, sync, like there's a lot of uh, things that happen. So this will take a little bit of time to, to finalize. Um, and then, um, but in the meantime, what we could do is we can SSH into Firepower or FXOS, the actual chassis itself, and run a couple of commands. It looks like a there it is all right so login our case admin write in that password and then from here we'll go scope SSA we'll go scope slot one and then scope app instance FTD and then the name so it'll be FTD a so all the command lines there's a command line reference document that you could certainly leverage um, if you're not familiar with it or use the question mark right um, or try to tab it out so show resource detail here, we can see the allocated cores, the allocated memory, the data disk. Um, and so that, remember the, the, the RAM was dynamically created based on the number of cores that you assign um, and the disk is 40 gig. Um, and now what we can do is we can actually check um, FTD um, B, uh, which uh, essentially is gonna be the same, right? And it is, right? So pretty easy, right? They're coming online now. You see the bottom one just triggered online. Um, you know, couple minutes, we've got two instances of firepower running on the same hardware with true isolation. Pretty easy stuff. And honestly, pretty cool stuff as well.